Greetings, brethren of the one God, his one church. This is Start the Day with Trevor and John. So it's good morning from me. Good morning from Trevor. We're going to be looking at uh, King David's life. Um, this is the bit before he fell into sin. So we're looking at 2 Samuel 7, yes. 1 till 17. 17. So if Trevor could open in prayer. Yeah, yeah Father, we thank you for this. Uh, once again, Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, we thank you, and uh, we thank you that you've given us your word. We thank you that you've given us so many things, Father. Gifts of the Spirit, your word, the Holy Spirit, eternal life. So, Father, we thank you as we consider now your word, as we meditate upon your word, that you will teach us, guide us, strengthen us, Equip us for the days ahead. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Trevor's going to read for us. So start, yes, so we start uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, 1 to 17. God's promise to David. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan, the prophet, Here I am living in a palace of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. That night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place, with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I, have, wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be a ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great like the names of the greatest men of the earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them any more, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and he will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings, afflict, with floggings inflicted by men. But my love will, will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I re removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever. Before me, your throne shall be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Amen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> We've looked at the story where David fell into sin. And I made the remark, um, and I've thought several times, what a pity Nathan wasn't with David on that particular night. And what a pity David was not obeying God and being in the battle at the front where he was meant to be. And had Nathan been there on that night as 
God's messenger to David as the counsellor, the advisor, the one who tells the king what God is saying, directly and indirectly. Because David was lacking judgment. David was in the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. And of course we don't know the lead up to that chapter, into Samuel chapter 11. We don't know the lead up to it. There's no detail. Was that the first time this neighbor's wife had gone out to bathe in public? Was this his, her, her habit? Was this her behavior, her freedom uh, to, to be on the roof where the palace could overlook? And, and we don't know. We can speculate. We can put it as a film. But there's only one scene we really know is what's described in the Bible. But where was Nathan? In hindsight, it would have been great for, for David to keep Nathan in his court. When he was at home, away from the battle, it would be great to have Nathan as God's spokesperson, if you like, telling David what God is saying. We don't know if God told David to go to the battle and David disobeyed. We don't know. But it, he wasn't meant to be there. He was out of God's will. And where was Nathan? We don't know. We know that Nathan was in David's life before the event, four chapters previously. And David was a shepherd. There are people, Christian leaders, who look on themselves like King David, that they have a throne over their church. They are the leader, the shepherd, the chief shepherd. Under the shepherd, they would say, but they are effectively the chief shepherd, with shepherds underneath them in their system of team, a pastoral team. And there's always a senior, an arch shepherd, an archbishop, a chief elder, a senior elder, over the other ministers. And apparently the pastor is the, the number one above prophets and apostles, which apparently for them don't exist today because it's all, it's all pastors. And nobody's apostolic, nobody's prophetic, nobody's pastoral except the pastor's team. But of course, the body of Christ is full of members of the body of Christ in body ministry. And we all have different gifts and talents and roles and functions within the body of Christ. And certainly not all are called to be this, that or the other. But we don't follow David. We're not Davidians. We don't follow David. We don't follow Elijah. We're not following Jeremiah. We're following Christ. We follow Paul in his writing as he followed Christ, as he said. Don't follow me except I follow Christ. Well, of course, he was a disciple of Christ. But many saw him as a lesser disciple of Christ because he wasn't really with Jesus as we were. We physically walked and talked and ate with Jesus physically before the cross. And here was Paul, late to the game, an ex-murderer, ex-Pharisee. Why listen to him? He's not really a real number one group disciple. But of course, Jesus, by his grace, saved Saul, the Pharisee, the murderer, the persecutor. And Paul had to suffer more than all the disciples. And of course, God used him mightily. 
the more we humble ourselves to God and ask him to change us, to do the very thing he wants us to do, to submit to him, to be changed, to be transformed, and to be conformed into the likeness of Christ. Not David, not Elijah, not Moses. The leaders of Israel, from Moses till David, were judges. They were put into judgment over the nation, as a judge would be. And then comes a king, because the people wanted a king. They wanted to be like the other nations with kings. They wanted one man to look up to. Well, we have Christ to look up to, that he is the king, the Lord, the saviour, the master, the teacher. And we have the Holy Spirit the body of Christ I'm talking about. And you know, God's told David, you're not going to build the temple. Your son Solomon will build the temple. And of course, it's a physical place that God wanted at that point of history, a physical place to have. And the temple was built. And God was there. The Holy of Holies. God's presence was separated from the nation by a curtain in the physical temple. And the priest could only enter once a year to make atonement. And they had a rope tied around his waist because if he died there, nobody could go in. They had to pull him out. And of course, that was John the Baptist's uh, father, the priest. But here comes Jesus, at that point of history. The priest above all priests. The apostle, the prophet above all prophets and apostles. God's only begotten son. Made lower than the angels, in the sense that fully human, that we are created lower than the angels, fully human, but Christ, of course, was the Spirit of God in a human body, so he was never lower than Lucifer. He was always greater than Lucifer, the archangel. He was never submitted to Lucifer. He was never submitted to the angels. He submitted himself to God the Father and his will, he didn't see equality with his father something to grasp at. Philippians 2. He submitted and he called himself the Son of Man. And the Son of Man is created lower than the angels. We are created by God lower than the angels. But Christ wasn't created. Christ was not an angel himself, and angels are created. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us, God incarnate, God made flesh, fully human, fully God, higher than the angels, as God is higher than all his creation, including the angels. So the battle continues today. True ministers of God know they are serving the master Jesus, not mammon, money, not anything, fame, success, power, authority, rule, kingship, Man calls his churches anything he likes. The king's church. He calls his church the king's church. Well, who's the king above all kings? 
The body of Christ is the body of Christ, not an organization. So if you call yourself the King's Church and you've registered that as your company, it is your company. The body of Christ is not your company. It's not for you to organize God and God's people into a business. It's not for you to sell the gifts of the Spirit or the time of God's servants. And you call yourself God's servants. And so why do you do what you're doing? Is it a career? Is it for the money? Is it for the power, the fame, the authority to be in control? Every cult has a, um, a definition, domination, intimidation, manipulation, and control. Control of who? The members of the cult. But this is not a time to continue your cults. Cultism, heavy shepherding, excluding non-members from prophesying into your life of your, quotes, church, your company, your organization, your charity. Jesus Christ has set us free from every spirit of this world. We're not under the spirits of this age. We're under Christ, under the Holy Spirit, under God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, our living God. The head of every husband is Christ. And the head of every wife in Christ is the husband in Christ. But the two have to be one. There is no spirit of feminism or chauvinism in the body of Christ. It's Christ who reigns. If you're not born again, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You're a believer, a churchgoer, a seeker, good person, charitable person. You could be a lovely man in ministry or a woman doing the best you can to lead the flock but you're not the shepherd Jesus is Jesus Christ is the shepherd and if he's not your shepherd it's no good you saying you're a pastor it's time to put your crowns down to the feet of the resurrected Jesus Christ Jesus is omnipresent He's in us, his people, born of God. Our temple, our spirit is full of God's spirit. Our spirit was not made by man. God made us in his image, all of us, his children. The children of the Father are those who are in Christ. Those who have chosen Christ were the children of God because of Christ, because of the blood of the Lamb. Our sins are forgiven. We are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. The temple has been cleansed to receive the Holy Spirit within. We are changing, being transformed, being conformed into the likeness of Christ one day of salvation at a time. Our attitude must be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who was tempted in every way, yet did not sin. We're not Jesus. We're not the Holy Spirit. We're not God the Father. We're the body. And the body has one head, Christ. We're clothed with Christ and Christ's righteousness. We're filled with Christ's light and truth. The love of God is in us. The perfect love of Christ casts out all fear. There's no fear in perfect love. 
and we're in Christ to do the will of God the Father in Christ in spirit in truth one day of salvation at a time it's no longer I who live it's Christ who lives in me it's no longer I who speak it's Christ who speaks through me yes I'm still fully human I still have mundane things to do, I still have mundane conversations to have, but mundane, not profane. We're not of the spirit of the world anymore. We are of Christ, 100%, 100% of the time. Can we be tempted? Yes. Do we want to be tempted? No. Will we give in to temptation? By the grace of God, no. We will resist the devil. Submit to God and resist the devil. One day at a time, one hour at a time, one minute at a time, one second at a time. We know there's a battle. <clears throat> we know there's op opposition to us, God's people. We know the world hates us. We have to be as shrewd as the serpents gentle as the dove so let's leave it there over to trevor yeah yeah father we thank you for your word and um yeah as john was reading i was just saying there's you know the warning there there's a warning there for us in the beginning of chapter seven after the king was settled in his palace and the lord had given him rest from all his enemies round about him there's a danger when we relax, when we let go of spiritual strength and we become complacent, possibly. And the enemy can tempt us then. The king was settled. He wasn't fighting. He had rest from all his enemies. He was relaxing. And that can be a danger time for temptation. So, Lord, we just thank you for the warning here. And, uh, and uh, we pray, Lord, as we go ahead of this day, that you'll keep us. He was Lord aware of what's happening. Keep us Lord in your peace. Keep us um, discerning what's going on around us and aware of the um, enemy's tricks and traps that he may be planning. So Father, we thank you for this day. Keep us in your love. Keep us praising you, serving you. Keep us ever watching for the temptations of the enemy, but also listening to your voice and obeying your still small voice. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yeah. Amen. God bless.